everybody. Happy Thursday. This is Tennis Bets Live. I'm Danny Clevenger, joined by the guy like that likes to talk even more than I do. Can we believe that that exists? Alex Gruskin, what's going on, my friend? How's your Thursday going? I make miracles happen, DK. It is a fantastic <laughs> Thursday. Our final day, really, of chaos. I feel like 16 singles matches is so manageable after 64 yes. the first two days, 32 these past two. But this is our last day of chaos, and as such, so many opportunities for dis- us to discuss on today's show. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that, because I thought I was losing my mind a little bit. Like, these <laughs> Masters 1000s tournaments, I feel like I'm juggling a lot, especially a men's and women's combined tournament. Then you get into a slam, it's like, which way happens? What? Did, who won here? Who? What? what it's, it's exhausting. It's very tough, but it is very fun. because You may be losing your mind, but that would be independent of the tennis for what it's worth. Correct. Okay, fair. I might be losing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's jump in and talk about some of the storylines that we've seen um, between last night when we have done the show to now. So there have been some upsets. Obviously, we've got to start with Serena. And how she was able to pull off uh, a big win over the two seed in that contivate. Now, look, I understand how she did it. I think everybody does. She she had glimpses of both Serena and Annette Contivate, maybe not in an exact form as she uh, as she has been in the past to get her that two seed. But what did you see out of Serena? And knowing that she has Isla Tomjanovic just knocking down the door, what are your thoughts there? It was twofold. A, she was aggressive from the start, and she won over 70% of her first serve points. Whenever Serena Williams is doing that, that first serve, the foundation of all of her success throughout her career, the best serve in women's tennis history, uh, that serve was clicking on all cylinders last night. You know, as such, she gave the crowd something to root for, which obviously they're going to be pulling for her no matter what. But to actually give them ammunition, something that was easy to get behind. You saw that press on Annette Conteve throughout the course mm-hmm. of the match. And, you know, Serena was up 5-4 in the first set. Yes, she gets broken. But again, she was leading from the start. Then she gets that opening break in set three. And for her to be up to love, it just allowed her to play aggressive from the start of that third set and, you know, some of the swinging volleys she was hitting, how well she was connecting on the return. It was a perfect opponent because Conteve certainly got tentative and right. Serena was right there to make, uh, to pounce on that. But I mean, you're right. Shades of a vintage Serena Williams there. She played excellent last night. And now Tom Yanovich, that's a favorable draw for her. In fact, Serena Williams is now the favorite. It's at minus 160 the last time that I looked. But the, I'm actually taking a step further. Curious of your pick there in that in that match. And, I mean, not necessarily that you have to pick it on this show, just where you're leaning. And then my further question there is, can she win that quadrant? Because then you have Ludmila Samsonova flying in the wings if she wins her match here today. Then, of course, on the top half of that bottom court quadrant, you've got Anjabor, Shelby Rogers as well. Do you think Serena has a chance? It's not the hardest draw I've ever seen. Things broke for her perfectly in round number three. I mean, Tamjanovic doesn't have the weapons to overwhelm Serena with. And the question is, how much does Serena have left in the tank? Because certainly these first two matches have been draining physically. Last night in particular, you imagine it was almost as mentally taxing as it was physically. She can absolutely beat Tamjanovic. And to make her a favorite, I think that's a strong overreaction to last night, at least minus 165. I would probably make this even odds both ways. Um, but she can certainly win now round number three. I think Sam Snova beats her no matter what. And I got to spend a lot of time with Sam Snova on the grounds in Cleveland where she just won the event last week. And I was talking to her practice partner who was describing the ball that Sam Snova hits. And he, you know, he's a high level a top five player in division three college tennis. And his response was, you know, dude, I hit the ball at her and it comes back with even more action. Like you think you find her backhand, she redirects it down the line. That forehand just so heavy. She's playing so well right now. She has the weapons to hurt Serena with. I think you have to have weapons. If you're going to beat this Serena Williams, you have to be able to make her uncomfortable. Samson Nova can do that. Both Shelby Rogers and Owen Shabur can do that at levels that respectfully Annette Conteve cannot. I think Tomjanovic is a great round. And then again, she's in the second week. Magic could happen. But 
I would be betting against Serena if she were to make the fourth round. Yeah, that's that was sort of my take earlier on Live on the Line on Valley Sports as well. Okay, well, that was our Serena breakdown. Let's go back to this board really quick about what happened and who won and who lost last night because there were quite a few green pluses, quite a few Xs. Not our best day, but not our worst <laughs> day by far. Uh, what stood out to you? I'm, I'm trying to find your wagers, but they aren't on, aren't on here. So apparently you, you sat the day out. Inauspicious, inauspiciously, inauspiciously. That's it's okay. You that can't spell no, no, I'll get or there. We're losing it. our minds. Do. <laughs> a lot of tennis. Uh, absent am I from that board now? Yes. I've been offering my picks every day on our Hadad Maya. Podcast. Let me that down. Board. Yeah, that one was the late night thriller. Yeah, a lot of overs would be what I'm noticing. The two trends would be a lot of women's matches are going the distance. If you yeah. think it's going to be close between the two of them, take the over. Probably don't take a spread on the men's side. You know, we've only had two seeds lose over the past two days. Now, yeah. yesterday, only one seed won in straight sets. It was Daniil Medvedev in the nightcap. Every seed got pushed, but every seed ended up winning. And I do think as we move through this U.S. Open mm -hmm. and a lot of underdogs tomorrow on the men's side are seeded, I think the seeds are playing well, or at least well enough right now. And so I might, you know, again, start taking some favorites parlays. Just go with the players you think are winners maybe over game spreads because game spreads are where we're getting killed. Absolutely. I was pretty thrilled with Tommy Paul coming through against Corda. I felt like a lot of pushback. I don't remember yeah. who was on the show that day that I talked about it, but I didn't feel like people <laughs> felt very confident in that. Uh, so I was glad that he was able to get it done. But let's look ahead to what we have today. And um, what is your favorite match that's still to come? From a tennis perspective, I, I think there's better matches that will excite people moving forward. But the match I feel most confident in from a betting perspective is Miamir Kesmanovic against mm -hmm. Richard Gasquet. And that's one of my picks here on the day. Kesmanovic, you can get him minus three and a half games at minus 140. He which is steamed rolled him the last time they played. Six well, love, six three. Exactly. And Kesmanovic has been one of the breakout stars of 2022. Yeah. He obviously was the beneficiary, which isn't the best word to use, but when Novak Djokovic is forced to withdraw from the 2022 Australian Open, he got the lucky loser. He parlays that into a fourth round appearance. He's been cruising ever since. And, you know, for Kesmanovic, he's 7-0 this year against players ranked outside the top 50 on hard courts. With all due respect, that's what Richard Gasquet is at this point. Mm -hmm. And you look for Gasquet, who is one in four against the top 50 on hard courts last year, two and eight against the top 50 overall. If you have the physicality to outlast what is still an exceptional shot maker in Richard Gasquet, he's going to look like the 36 year old he is. And I just think Kesmenovic minus three and a half games, he has to win in straight sets. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to do that. And so that is probably my single bet I'm most confident in here on what is a tricky day for. Absolutely. You know, I actually took him as a part of a four leg parlay. I was feeling actually Love spicy that. because um, these favorites are very, very heavy favorites. So I figured pair a bunch of them together. Samsonova being one of them, which we already spoke about. Uh, Denis Shapovalov, I do believe he can get a win today. And Hubie Hercoc has Isla Ivashka which I think he'll be able to get through with, <coughs> excuse me. I lost my voice. Are we lost my mind? Now my voice. It's okay. We're making it through. It is only Thursday. Um, but if you pair all that together, you get plus 158. Is there any of those four legs that you see, you think, eh, I'm not so sure. Shapo always makes me nervous. Yeah, you lost the voice because that's very <laughs> spicy with Dennis Shapovalov. <laughs> I mean, he's won, what, like three matches since beating Nadal in the clay court season. It's fewer than five. Our and, bias, you know, was, or Baena is who he's playing. Yeah, that, again, though, that's like a typical Chapo brain fart, and he loses yeah. that match in a stupid Hope four not. sets. Now, at the same time, I like that parlay a lot. Like, I just went through this <laughs> diatribe. That's a word I know. Shout out to Michigan. Um, I went through this <laughs> diatribe on how money line parlays might be the move because if you're confident in a favorite, rock them right now. I like money lines more than game spreads. It's scary to say this. I'm losing my mind as well. I really like all four legs of that parlay. We agree on Hoopy Hercots today and just some numbers to throw at you. 
Hubie's 15 and five against players ranked outside the top 50 on hard courts this season. He's been spectacular at every Masters event since the start of last year on hard court, most notably, of course, last year's Miami title, which he quietly filed, followed up with a semifinal this year. Not too bad from Hubie Hercots. He's been bad at hard court slams, but. Ilya Vashka is a guy who struggles against taller players. I think it's 18 and 26. He is against guys over six foot four. Hubie's got enough pace to get into that Ivashka body that I think it's an uncomfortable matchup for Ivashka. And it just feels like, again, who's winning this U.S. Open on the men's side? I have no freaking clue. And when that happens of late, doesn't Wait, can it you like tell me he's going to win on the women's in? side too? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm feeling more and more confident. I, I have a women's futures thing I'm looking at. I think I've narrowed it down to the six players who are capable of winning on the women's side. Okay. Do you want to hear my rant? Oh, go ahead. Let's hear okay. your rant. This is so, what we're here for. Yeah, it's what well, the people like to see. I appreciate this. This is really the goodies, uh, Super Producer Haston. But I think <laughs> with how the odds are right now, there are really six players you can bet on, and you can kind of find value by betting on all six. So... Iga Sviantek is down to like plus 220 to win the tournament, plus 225. I think she's looked good enough in her first two wins. Paulini Stevens straight said she's doing her thing. She's the surest thing in the draw. She would be number one. The other five contenders I have are all 10 to one or bigger. And so really, if one of them has to hit, you know, again, it covers everything else. So I'm going to run these five names at you. You tell me if I'm crazy or not. Okay. French Open finalist Coco Goff, 10 to one. Love it. Also on the bottom half of the draw, she wouldn't have to face Iga till the final. Samsonova, 11 to 1. Love it. She's won 12 matches in a row. She's gone from 65 to 1 to 11 to 1. I agree. Sabalenka, 12 nope, to 1. Hate it. Kai <laughs> Neffi, plus 180. Nope. Okay. This is, your, this is where you, I knew she was going to be on your list. And I'm telling you, she's facing the bracket buster today. You're right. But A, she only double faulted four times in match number one, which is, <laughs> is like... so sad we're talking uh, about the 16th. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But Rabakina got knocked out of her section. And if someone's going to beat Iga on the top half of the draw, Sabalenka is the only one I could point to capable of doing it. So I wanted someone in case it's not Iga on the top half. Sabalenka was my best choice. Catch if you want to go with Kanepi, I won't shame you. Uh, and Drescu, <laughs> 16 to 1, after that win over Haddad Maya last night. I agree. She looked really good. I did not think she was going to beat Haddad Maya in the Battle of the Bias, as I wanted to call it. Um, <laughs> but she did. And now, yeah. who does she have next? It's today, tomorrow. Caroline Garcia. Caroline Garcia. Yeah, that's yeah. tough. Yeah, and but I, if she gets through that. And Garcia, I believe, is the favorite. I think it's at, like, minus 125. Yeah, it, I mean, that's a fascinating match. If she gets through that, now she's in the contender conversation. And again, you get her 16 to 1 right now. The last one, Jabour, because she has been pretty consistent this year. Bottom half of the draw. Again, five of those six names are greater than 10 to 1. Put a unit on them. Because I, other than those five in Iga, I, like, I don't think anyone else left in the tournament can win it. Four of those players I put a dollar on just to start the tournament, wherever they were, flyer-wise. So I feel like I'm covering all my bases here. So I do appreciate um, those picks. So, yes, I, I think Kanepi's got it. The Williams sisters will play together here soon. I say straight sets. Mike, the producer, was just talking to me earlier. He's got them in three sets to win that one. Um, Brooksby just got it done over George. That was one that I didn't really believe too much in Brooksby and believed too like way too much in Chorich um, and Brooksby just took him to school. Um, Brooksby was a sets. favorite in that yeah, match by was. the end. Yeah. What do the books know that we didn't going yeah. into that one? Cause I agree with you. I thought Chorich would put up a bigger fight. I did too. I was really shocked. I was just hoping he would get that. It would get pushed at least to four or five sets. I think is what I had. I think I had him winning two sets. So mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily outright, but Still, um, Fruvitova, she is a name that I feel like we're going to continue to see popping up more and more later on in these tournaments. Um, that's one to pay attention to. Zico's got her over, oh, no, plus one and a half sets over Muguruza, not outright. No, outright. I'm seeing the half a unit. Gosh, she's blowing my mind here. You think Mugu's going to go down to her? I mean, we do a bit on our Crack Racket shows where we don't talk about the greatest of all time. We talk about who hasn't been eliminated from the greatest of all time right. discussion. And Linda Fruvertova at 17 years old 
hasn't been eliminated from the greatest of all time discussion she's, she's yet. She's the now, cutest. She's the cutest. She came and sat with us in Miami, so soft, so spoken, so sweet. And then she goes out there and look at her now. Performing I know. Over it's the bright so lights. good at tennis. It's yeah. unbelievable. And so Muguruza has played bad. Like, it's a very <laughs> winnable match. I like the bold play from Zika. All right. Finally, I do want to give a little bit of a shout out to Allison Risk because we've got to give shout outs to where the American women are doing well. Uh, we are obviously based in America and this is an American tournament. So Risk does have a chance, I think, over Wang. This is <clears throat> not going to be necessarily a cakewalk for her, but I do think she could probably get it done in two sets if she if she uh, stays focused. What do you think about Risk and her play? We had five American women in the bottom half of the draw reach round number three yesterday and it sucks that two of them have to play golf and know, keys golf and in keys. round three but risk burned me yesterday because i had her minus three and a half game she hit one i think by three so that hurt but yeah seven six in the third that was impressive uh for her yesterday over kami Osorio, and her game on this surface just works like that forehand is a pancake like if mm -hmm. so you know if you get slapped in the bar by that forehand you're like okay i did something wrong um, that said, it stays low. It stays deep. Like she has weapons and, you know, Wang Shiyu, talented lefty, one of a couple talented young Chinese players right now on tour, but it's her first third round at a slam. It's a massive opportunity for risk. I like the play DK. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Now, before we go, we've got a comment first from Wolfie that we'll get to in just a second, but I have an apology due. Oh. I called Brett Connors out yesterday for not giving us a wager. I said that he was sneaking out on his homework. Come to find out he's in the ER with appendicitis. So um, he's live betting still from the hospital bed. But Brett, I am sorry. We hope you get better soon. I'm glad it was a successful surgery. And my hand is all the way in my mouth for uh, calling you out on not giving us a wager. I don't know. Appendicitis, you can text in the bets. Now, I didn't text him in yesterday either. I have no excuse, but like broken limb will talk. Come on, BC, send those in. <laughs> well, it's nice to see that uh, he's doing what we know him to love to do, and that is live wager just straight from the hospital bed. Great stuff. Okay, we also have a viewer question, more so looking for a breakdown between Nadal and Fonini. Uh, thanks, Wolfie, for that, that question. Do you think that Nadal will win? He is obviously a heavy, heavy favorite. Um, do you think this is one of his big challenges moving forward? It is a challenge because Fabio Fonini is – not afraid of Rafael Nadal. Mm -hmm. He has no problem. Night session is what he lives for. You know, Fonini at the back half of his career, maybe, you know, back four or five holes. All the swag. Him. Yeah, exactly. He's going to come out swinging. <laughs> but does he have the discipline? Three out of five sets. I thought Nadal looked pretty good by the end of his first round match against Rinky Hichikata. I don't think Fonini is going to win this match. I think he could take an early set. I think especially set number two would be the one I'd look at where Fonini just gets out to an early break lead and connects on a couple of forehands down the line. But I just, at this stage of his career, I just don't think physically he's going to be able to hang with Rafa. So I would lean Rafa probably pretty heavy, but like to bet on Rafa, you have to bet nine and a half games or eight yeah. and a half games. It's, it's something like ridiculous, yeah. but that is a great point. That is an option at most of the books, if not all of them to say, who's going to win, which particular set. And if you take Fonini mm -hmm. to win set two, um, that's not, I bet you get pretty decent value there as mm -hmm. well. So that's a good little play. Well, appreciate you, Gruskin, hanging out with me. Always good to talk with you. Day four from the U.S. Open. Our heads are spinning. Our minds are getting lost, but yet we're getting some great traumatic tennis. So it's been very fun. Remember, you can see us tomorrow is our last day uh, of Tennis Bets Live for now. And you can hang out with us at the same time, same place, tennis.com, Tennis Channel's YouTube page, and at Tennis Bets on Twitter. Have some fun watching Tennis Night. Enjoy it, and let's hit some winners.